I was, and still am, a huge conspiracy guy. I literally ran out of new tin hat topics to research, and I still wouldn't look at this one without embarrassment. But every time I glanced at it, there was something unresolved. And well, hi everyone, and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy. Today we're going to have a look at the 10th episode of Mark Sargent's Flat Earth Clues. He originally titled this one, Hiding God, so it should be interesting. So let's cue up the music and get started. Flat Earth Clues, Part 10, Hiding God. This is part of a series of clues that can help you get your head around both the design of the flat earth system we live in and who has been involved in the deception to hide it from you. As you can tell from the title, I'm taking a different approach. Eventually, I was going to have to address the question of what happens next or what we do now with the information at hand. If you've made it through the guide and the first nine clues, then at this point you're either buying into the flat model or on the fence. If this is the first one you went to because of the title, I recommend you go back because we're not going to do much in the way of reviewing. But if you're still with me, then you would agree that one, the world you've been taught has been kept from you, and two, one way or another, you would like to prove this out. So how is this possible? The authority in question who created what you call the globe is guarding all the gates. They protect the sky, the outer edge, and most importantly, the education system that shows us at an early age what they want us to see. Nobody listening to this has their own spaceship or advanced rocket program. Nobody actually owns a long distance icebreaker and while some of you may have a private plane, I wouldn't recommend testing a military barrier that technically doesn't exist. But then again, you have to remember that this is not the story of David and Goliath. The hidden world was never going to be sustainable forever. As a civilization evolves, the tools the authority uses as a method of control become more vulnerable. I've learned many things about systems over the years, and one thing that I find most interesting is as layers of strength increase, the higher the chance that they can be used to your advantage. Now before we get into this too deeply, I think there's a couple of things that we probably ought to go over. First, Mark is rehashing his the world is a Hollywood set concept. He is using the Truman Show analogy to say that the entire Earth is some sort of set being controlled by a puppet master somewhere. He terms this puppet master the authority. And the authority not only controls access to the outer rim, to the earth, and to the sky, but manipulates this uh, through the education system to hide it from us. Now I think given the title of this video, we need to ask ourselves a question. Is God the authority? Is the authority working with God? Or does God oppose the authority, yet the authority prevails? How do we reconcile these questions? Why don't you all think about that as we go on with the video? But maybe I'm talking in riddles. I should be boiling it down to what can be done by showing you what's being hidden, what's important, and how it can be spread to others without looking like a crazy person. To be clear, and I can't stress this enough, do not start conversations with the word flat earth. Think of it like fight club. The first rule of flat club is that you do not talk about flat club. Before you started waking up and watching all these things, you were like me. You laughed and mocked everything that was flat earth. You may have learned faster than others, but the knee-jerk reaction by 99% of the people was created the day they sat down in a classroom and stared at the globe. Look at the videos. 
not just mine, but others who are putting forward some great arguments and ask the questions that people can relate to. You know, Mark raises a very interesting point here. If you want to be taken seriously by people, there are certain things you should probably avoid. Obviously, mentioning flat earth right off the bat is something that you should avoid because it's quite a change to what they are used to understanding about their earth. You know, another thing that you might want to avoid just as much as mentioning flat earth right off the bat is making statements that people will immediately dismiss as being absurd. Everyone that you speak to would have seen the universal downward acceleration of 9.8 meters per second squared that occurs at every point on Earth. So making ridiculous statements like gravity doesn't exist or that it is just a theory is not going to go over well with thinking people. If you wish to approach this subject, you must acknowledge the fact that there is a downward acceleration, but you can say, we don't know for sure what's causing it. While many will still disagree with you, at least that's an intellectually honest answer. You know, another subject that you might want to avoid is your belief in other conspiracy theories. So, for example, if you want to talk to somebody about the Flat Earth without mentioning the Flat Earth, I probably wouldn't say the moon landings are fake, Bigfoot's real, UFOs are aliens, 9-11 was an inside job, or a host of other offbeat uh, conspiracy theories that would brand you as being a tinfoil hat wearing nutcase. While I would personally brand this as focusing on one delusion at a time, I think you get my point. I'm going to introduce three very important questions that you can use, each with a statement that precedes it, and each statement is a motivation for a different group of people. If you don't fall into one of these three groups, then I guarantee you know people that do. The first statement is this, you are being hidden. What do I mean by that? Well, this goes back to Clue 7 and Clue 9, which talk about the flights in the Southern Hemisphere. If you are flying a plane over the Southern Hemisphere, your flight is not being tracked. How can this be used to find out the truth? It's simple, it's quick, and it costs no money. No matter what country you live in, send a quick note to your local, state, or federal representative and ask them this question. Why are citizens of our country flying over oceans without the safety net of the GPS system? And remind them that GPS stands for global, not partial. Without GPS, anything could happen to your plane and no one knows where you are. And while you're at it, remind them that the GPS system was built by the United States Department of Defense, who never does anything small. The system that is in effect now has what appears to be huge deliberate gaps in the Southern Hemisphere only. Do not mention Flat Earth. Just voice your concern about the safety of you, your loved ones, and your fellow citizens. Will they get back to you? Possibly. Will they give you a satisfactory answer? Not a chance. Because they will only have what the military gives them. What this will do, however, is create a unique buzz in certain circles that may prove to be useful later. The more politicians or high-ranking officials you contact, the greater the noise. The motivation here, as you can tell, is general public concern. Well, my advice here is twofold. First of all, it would be good to at least know how the GPS and the aircraft location system worked. We went over this in Episode 7 and Episode 9, but it's still coming up here in Episode 10. GPS itself is a receiver-only unit. It simply tells you where the box is in reference to four satellites. It doesn't transmit that location anywhere else, and it is not used for flight tracking. Location depends on land-based radars painting the aircraft and receiving this data from the GPS or the ADS-B unit. This is actually a public safety issue that you can impact on, and that is to encourage your representatives to require or make it easier for aircraft to report their position via satellite. 
there are some efforts underway to do that right now and you may want to educate your legislator on how this system works, where its weaknesses are, and how it can be fixed. Now, what Mark is attempting to do here is indeed get a buzz going in the halls of state legislatures and national legislatures. This is not always a good thing from a public policy standpoint. CNN recently reported that 20 state legislatures in the United States have introduced bills to make it easier to opt out of vaccinations. These bills were introduced in response to noise from anti-vaxxers, and they are roundly opposed by the World Health Organization, the American Academy of Pediatrics, and basically anybody that knows anything about public health. It is basically legislators trying to get reelected by pandering to different vocal groups in their constituency at the expense of good public policy. The second statement is this, wealth is being hidden. What do I mean by that? Goes back to clue two and every other mention regarding Antarctica. In 1954, it was announced on national television that the continent was just millions of miles of rich energy resources. And by 1959, it was sealed off like Area 51. Mark, please, just stop. The South Pole is not sealed off like Area 51. People go there all the time. There are thousands of people that live and work there. It's just not true. You know that it's not true. So please, stop saying that. How can this be used to find out the truth? By contacting anyone you know in either the petroleum, natural gas, or mineral industry. This means ExxonMobil, British Petroleum, Royal Dutch Shell, Chevron, ConocoPhillips, BHP Billiton, Rio Tinto, Glencore, Anglo-American, and there are many others. Find anyone in these companies and make inquiries about their prospects in Antarctica. Send them the link to the Admiral Byrd interview and ask them why, if there are no environmental conflicts regarding oil, gas, or mining, why aren't they allowed to even petition the idea, even when the world's energy resources are dwindling more every day? Put the sound of money in their ear. They may not be able to break through the decades of red tape laid out in front of them, but it will create a buzz from a different side, the motivation of greed, and of pristine resources just begging to be harvested. You know, one of the biggest environmental controversies right now is drilling for oil in the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge. Do you honestly think that there is no concern for environmental issues, nor would there be any controversy if oil companies tried to drill for oil in Antarctica? I mean, really, the Sierra Club would probably have a stroke. Not to mention the fact that you would have to get every country that signed the Antarctic Treaty to agree to it, which would probably end the Antarctic Treaty, which would probably lead to a land rush in Antarctica to get these drilling tracks done. And quite frankly, that could lead to violence over resources. In other words, all of the problems that the Antarctic Treaty was set up to prevent. The bottom line is that is a profoundly bad idea. And finally, to preface the third statement, I need to thank all the people who have sent me stacks and stacks of biblical scripture asking me to stop dancing around the title of the flat model and call the structure what it really is. And you know, they have a point. I have put myself at a distance because I want to reach people who are outside of religious faith and even outside of general conspiracies. But for all those spiritual groups who have contacted me, I can now, however, say with conviction that this third statement is this. They are hiding God. Despite what labels I put on the flat model structure, the oldest names are from the oldest texts, one of those being called the firmament. If the firmament was indeed discovered in 1956 and it was deliberately hidden, 
then the ruling authority not only hid the structure, but evidence of the builders. And by builders, I mean creators, and by that, I mean what people define as God. Well, first of all, Mark, making the assertion that they found the firmament in the 50s is very different than presenting evidence that they found the firmament in the 50s. So basically, you're talking out of your tail. The second thing I want to bring to your attention is that the Bible is not a science book. It is a book of faith. And if you look at one of the key tenets of faith, is accepting something without evidence. If you prove it with evidence, it's no longer faith. I and many others in the science community simply don't have a problem with faith. Just don't confuse the two. Hiding God could be considered one of the worst ideas of all time. And if you are a person of great or small faith, you have a vested interest in any evidence that would solidify and vindicate your years of dedicated service. If a structure was found that had, for all intents and purposes, the handprint of God on it, then the ruling authority has no right to keep it from you. There are billions of people on this world who have personally dealt with the concept of God and would like to know for sure if these beliefs are well placed. Or, in short, you want to know the meaning of life. It's out there. And it's been hidden from you. Your motivation is clear. Go to your church leaders, your congregation, and tell them science probably found evidence of God in 1956 and decided to keep it a secret. Yes, Mark, there are millions, if not billions, of people on the earth that have a faith in God. There are a number of gods that they have faith in. They may disagree with which God is the right God, but the bottom line is every religion is based upon faith. In every religion, every religious person sees the hand of God all around them, all the time. They see the hand of God in the mountains, in the aurora, in a baby smile. Do you think that they have to have a specific thing that defines their belief in God or justifies or vindicates their belief in God? Does anybody judge them for having faith? No, I don't think so. Is there a report card for having faith? Is this some sort of a final exam that they have to do is present a piece of the true cross or Buddha's earring or whatever? You don't necessarily have to do that to have faith. You don't need to justify your faith to anybody else. And there is no piece of evidence that will confirm your faith to be right because there is no piece of evidence that can confirm your faith to be false. I can understand your confusion about this, Mark, because I don't think that there is a good movie out there that defines what faith is and is not. If you know people of religious power, send this up the ladder. Get the word out and see what comes back. Between these three statements and questions, people will talk to people who will talk with others and eventually reach someone who knows. This isn't a grassroot or groundswell movement that takes a long time, because the system that has been used to mold and control you these past years has been based on speed, and by that I mean real time. All it takes is a single video, a memorandum, one whistleblower, one key person, and everything changes, not in months or weeks or days, but hours. And in those hours, everything changes because of the speed. People all over the world wake up and look at the sky with new eyes, and things start to get better. One person, that's all it takes. One person to come forward and share what has been hidden for so long. Maybe someone who is tired of all the games. Maybe someone who has gone year after year burdened by such a heavy secret. Maybe you, who are listening right now, who is looking for a reason to come forward. 
this is it. And if you don't want to walk into the light and be the hero, I understand. But if you can't, for whatever reason, then be anonymous, share the message, and help us make this world better, because it can be better. For everyone else, give this person an opening. Give them the opportunity and give them the support they need to help reclaim what's left of our civilization because we need it now more than ever. I will keep spreading the word for as long as I can in hopes that everyone that hears it starts seeing things with new eyes. And I encourage each of you to do the same. And maybe one day we will learn to treat others better than we treat ourselves. Folks, this is Dr. Todd Grande. He is a psychologist that's been featured on this channel a few times because he has some really insightful comments on conspiracy theories and the flat earth. He actually addressed this very issue, and unbeknownst to Mark, he is actually bringing up the one logical fallacy of conspiracy theories such as this. It's been stated that Admiral Byrd found the firmament. Now, he had people on that expedition, he came back several times, including with a large military expedition involving thousands of people and aircraft. Tens of thousands of people have worked and researched and lived in Antarctica. Thousands of tourists have gone to the South Pole and Antarctica. There are tourist flights that go over parts of Antarctica. There are tens of thousands of National Guardsmen that flew the supply aircrafts into these research bases. So where is the Eric Snowden? Or in terms that you would understand, where is NEO? How much difficulty did they have keeping the Manhattan Project secret for three years? Do a little of your own research and see how good they were at keeping that a secret. Who knew about it? Did the Russians? Yep. Did the Germans and the Japanese? Don't know for sure. Why don't you go find out? You call for one whistleblower to come forward, either publicly or anonymously. Well, you've had 70 years, Mark. Why aren't there any forward now? Human nature would dictate that you would have to have some by now. And for that matter, why hasn't Eric Dubay gone down there? Why haven't you? Why hasn't somebody from the Flat Earth community gone to the South Pole and found the firmament? You came up with $20,000 for a laser ring gyroscope just to check for the uh, rotation of the Earth. Why don't you buy a ticket and go to the South Pole, Chief? Do your own research. Well, this is Bob the Science Guy signing out from Northern Michigan. Thank you for stopping by and make sure you like and subscribe to my channel. This rabbit hole's too deep for me. Oh